The theme of this year's TEDx is our fast-changing world, and I cannot agree more with it. Our world is indeed changing incredibly fast. I mean, come on, just look around us. There's a new revolutionary iPhone launching every couple of years, and every single second some kind of new cool gadget is being released. And not only technologically, climate change is happening at a faster rate than ever before. So many new economies are emerging, the job markets are shifting, much more than we could ever imagine. However, many aspects have yet not changed, such as racism, inequality, wage gaps, double standards, just to name a few. Well, I don't mean they haven't exactly changed, but definitely not as much as they should. Recently, the murder of George Floyd, which most, if not all of you have heard about, has sparked a series of movements and protests worldwide. It was an unacceptable action, and I couldn't be happier to see proactive people chasing justice and endeavoring the eradication of racism. But if I were to talk about all of these issues in detail, it would take so much more time than we actually have. So I'll focus on one of them, which has had the most influence in my life. I'll begin by sharing a bit of my story. One of my biggest passions since ever is playing soccer. And when I was a child, my ultimate dream was to become a soccer player. And people actually told me I had a talent to do so. For me, one of the best feelings in the world was putting on my uniform, stepping onto the field, having my team score a goal. There was nothing better than the feeling of giving 110% of myself in the field, always playing my absolute best, and seeing how I have been improving year after year, tournament after tournament. And I know everyone always tells you to choose your career by what you like, and your profession by your passions, and not if it pays well or not. But this time, it was different. Not only did women receive much less money, but their lives overall were so much harder. It was harder to get into teams, to get sponsors, to do anything. There were certain taboos with girls playing soccer, and no one ever did anything to tackle them. It was then when I started researching why. I don't know if you were aware of that, but women's soccer was prohibited by law in Brazil until 1979. Our country, that prides itself for having soccer running through our veins, for having the best players in the world, including women, for having soccer as a tradition, as a symbol, had prohibited women from playing this beautiful game, claiming it was against their nature. Well, happily, along the past few years, some famous players and companies have been trying to raise awareness and fight this issue. And there's actually a quote I really enjoy. Marta said those words in the Women's World Cup 2019, and it's basically a message for younger girls, a request to keep fighting and to believe in yourselves and an appeal to keep the sport she, me, and we all love alive. And even though this was an issue that bothered me very deeply, I decided to let it go and not to become a soccer player. As time went by, along the school years, I found out I had a certain ease when working with numbers and logic and all that stuff, and I actually quite enjoyed it, which led me to my second option of career, being an engineer. Well, guess what I found out? Women, like men, but cheaper. Soon enough, I was facing the exact same issue all over again. Women received less, and this time there were so little female professionals in the sector. And I didn't even need to go to jobs and markets and professional stuff to see that. I could just look around in my school, in my ear group. I am the only girl in my computer science class. And only 30% of my physics class are girls. If there's such a huge impact in my school alone, imagine that on a global scale. And back I was on the internet, researching why. Why was there such a difference? And I got down to four main reasons. One, the motherhood gap. And no, I'm not talking about maternity leave. The motherhood gap refers to the disadvantages women face after they have children, after the maternity leave. Many new mothers have to change to a part-time job just to take care of the child or children. And there was actually a published report in 2019 in the US that stated that lots of new mothers choose to work near from home, which eventually decreased their career opportunities. Two, social pressure and norms. Many women choose a job that doesn't pay as much and which they don't like as much just because of society and pressure. They feel obligated to choose certain sectors or simply not to choose others because people tell them that's how it's supposed to be. Three, bias. Even though some people might disagree on this one, it is a thing and it is present in thousands of firms globally. It prevents women from 
being recruited, getting promotions, everything. And four, almost no women in high-ranking jobs. This one is due to thousands of millions of factors that I definitely don't have time to explain each one. But it also includes the three I have just talked about. And I have already told you I like numbers and statistics. So let's see how these things appear in numbers. This first graph shows women's earnings as a percentage of men's earnings in the US per age. It is clear that as soon as young women reach the market, they already receive less than men. Now, as they get older, the gap decreases a bit and then increases again. This is exactly the motherhood gap. Women start succeeding in their careers, but around the ages of 20 to 30 or so, they have children. From there on, the motherhood gap is what prevents most careers from growing again. Now, this is a table from a really good research paper published by Classdar Economics Research in 2019. It shows the unadjusted and adjusted wage gap in eight countries. And the unadjusted is just the average difference as it is. But I want to call your attention to the, to the adjusted one. It is you. It is compare. It compares. Sorry. It compares women and men from the same age group, same scholarity or education, same experience, similar jobs, similar everything, and there's still an unexplained wage gap. I mean, it may it may not seem such a big deal, such as in Australia to receive ninety seven cents instead of a dollar. I mean, just three cents of a difference. But imagine that on a woman's life earnings. It does have a difference. And this is a graph by the same published report, and it's basically the estimate to when the gender pay gap in the US will close. And I don't know how you feel about this, but I can assure you that 2070 is still a long way from now. Imagine all the girls' lives until now that had already, have already changed because of this issue, and how many more there will be if the, it isn't tackled right now. And as I developed my research, I got down to five simple steps we can all take to change it, to tackle this issue right now. One, change education. Education nowadays directs children from a young age on what to do. By providing them with more experience in several areas, they might come to enjoy something they never thought of before. Two, tackle stereotypes. This one might seem closely related to the first one, but it's also extremely important. There's no such thing as a boy's career or a girl's career, a boy's sport or a girl's sport. Three, provide more work opportunities. Offer more senior jobs to women. You might be impressed with their productivity. Part of the reason for pay gaps to exist is that women aren't offered as much senior roles as men are. Four, encourage shared childcare, not only childcare, but also housework. It is a stereotype that women are the ones that should do all of the childcare, all of the housework. That prevents them from working more time and then being more productive, which leads to a huge snowball effect that never ends. And five, reduce bias in recruitment. And this one fits not only recruitment, but pay decisions, promotions, who's going to represent your firm in a conference, anything. And in the end, it all comes down to support. And by support, I don't mean turning on the TV in one game, taking a picture, and then turning it off again. I don't mean by going to the Olympics in one game and saying you were a supporter. I mean really supporting, helping in whichever way possible. Might that be by subsidizing a women's only engineering team, or perhaps just even raising awareness, showing people how this is an issue that should have been extinct decades ago. Today, I'm coming here and I am showing all of you how this is a problem. How this is a problem that changed my life and continued to change many girls' lives. I am doing my part and I'm going to pursue my career. And I have an appeal to all young girls to pursue your dreams and for all the people to just support them, help them in whichever way you can. I hope I gave you all something to think about. I am doing my part. What are you going to do to tackle this issue?